Today, we are kicking off our new series, the AI Studio Power User Playbook. This four-part series will transform you from a casual user into a confident practitioner who can solve real-world problems using Google AI Studio. Google AI Studio gives you free access to some of the most powerful AI models on the planet. But there's a catch they don't tell you about on the homepage. In this video, I am not just going to show you what the buttons do, I am going to give you the official unwritten manual so you can use it like a pro from day one. Welcome to AI Futurist Toolbox, your friendly guide to AI and future technology. In today's video, the first in the series, we will cover a complete walkthrough of AI Studio. We will cover the core differences between the Gemini app and the Google AI Studio, a walkthrough of AI Studio's four powerful workspaces that transform AI from a helper into a powerhouse, the multi-perspective analysis to reveal blind spots in your thinking, real-time AI coaching that works with any software on your screen, and finally, the hidden limitations that could catch you off guard. Ready to unlock the full potential? Let's dive in. So what's the big deal? Isn't it all Gemini? Well, yes and no. The Gemini web app is the consumer-friendly chat interface most of us know, similar to ChatGPT. It's fantastic for quick questions, summaries, and everyday tasks. But AI Studio is a free, web-based testing ground for power users. It's where you can get access to much more advanced capabilities from Gemini. The fundamental difference isn't about a vague sense of quality, but about control versus convenience. The Gemini app is optimized for convenience, providing a polished chat experience for daily use. AI Studio, on the other hand, is for building with AI. It is a developer-centric environment designed for prototyping and creating AI-powered applications, serving as the fastest path from an idea to a production-ready tool. The biggest differences I have found are the output speed and the sheer quality of responses. When I gave both the platforms the same research task using long PDF reports, AI Studio consistently delivered more extensive evidence, more granular statistics and far more detailed breakdowns than the standard web app for the same prompt. Think of it this way, Gemini web app is your reliable daily assistant, while AI Studio is your specialized research lab with professional great tools. A pro user seeks control and the AI Studio provides it. For example, the consumer-facing Gemini app often has real-time search grounding enabled by default, whereas in AI Studio, you have the control to explicitly enable it when needed. This level of granular control is what separates a casual user from a professional builder. The interface may look intimidating at first, especially if you are used to simple chatbots like Gemini, ChatGPT or Cloud, but don't worry, once you understand the layout, it's incredibly intuitive. AI Studio is organized into four core workspaces. Chat, where you can experiment with your latest Gemini models and fine-tune your output with advanced settings. This is your primary sandbox for testing prompts. Stream, which allows for incredible real-time interactions with Gemini. Think of it as an AI assistant looking over your shoulder to help you with anything on your screen. Generate Media, your creative hub for making professional-level images and videos using models like Imagine or Vue. And finally, Build, where you can deploy production-ready applications powered by Gemini without writing a single line of code. Each module solves different problems, and mastering them transforms how you work with AI. Let's start with the one you will choose the most, Chat. The chat interface looks simple, much like the standard Gemini app. You can ask basic questions or give commands, but the real power lies in the settings. AI Studio has one of the most powerful features that I haven't found in any other platform, System Prompts. This lets you define exactly how you want the AI to think and respond before every conversation. You can use it to define specific styles, expertise levels, or instructions to ensure consistently high quality output. On the right side, you'll find the run settings. Let's quickly explore them. In the model selection, you can choose from the latest models like Gemini 2.5 Flash or Pro. Pro is generally the most advanced version. As you type, you'll notice the token count here in the corner. Every interaction, both your prompt and the model's response, consumes tokens. Each model has a maximum token limit or context window. A pro user is always mindful of this limit, especially when analyzing large documents or having long conversations. If you exceed the limit, the AI can lose its short-term memory of the start of your chat, so managing it is a key professional skill. Think of the temperature settings as a creative detail. Low numbers make outputs more predictable and factual, while the high numbers generate more creative and varied responses. 
In the two sections, there are several powerful options here. Grounding with Google Search allows the AI to search Google for real-time information. URL context lets you insert URLs for the AI to analyze specific web pages, and structured output helps format responses in specific ways. The safety settings adjust how likely you are to see potentially harmful responses. Content is filtered based on the probability of harm. By default, these are conservative. AI Studio also accepts diverse file types. You can upload files from your computer or drive, record audio, or even paste a YouTube URL. This allows the system to analyze financial reports, transcribe meetings, or extract insights from video content, often eliminating the need for multiple other tools. Okay, let's move on to one of my favorite features, the compare mode. This lets you run two different chat windows side by side to see how different models or different mindsets tackle the same problem. Let me show you with a real example. Say I am considering starting an online course on AI tools for small businesses and I want to brainstorm possibilities, challenges and the way forward. I will press the compare button to open two chat windows side by side. On the left, I will put a system prompt urging the AI to think like a risk averse business consultant. I will uncheck the sync button so different prompts can be used on each side and reduce the temperature to 0.2 for more grounded, factual responses. On the right, I will prompt the AI to think like an optimistic growth strategist and crank the temperature up to 1.8 for more creative output. The results are fascinating and reveal key differences. First, notice the tone and framing. On the left side, our risk averse consultant opens up by calling this idea a double-edged sword and immediately jumps into barriers, market saturation, hesitant audience, resource strain. But look at the right side, your optimistic strategy starts with a resounding yes and leads with the potential, large, eager markets and big upside. Same question, completely different energy. Now let's look at how they analyze competition. The cautious side sees competition as a threat. Big players already dominate, it's hard to stand out. And suggest we play it safe by picking small, undeserved niches. But watch this, the optimistic side sees the same competition as validation. They are saying, hey, if there is competition, that proves there is demand. And here where it gets really interesting, their marketing strategies. The risk averse side is highlighting all the costs and difficulties. The reaching small business owners is a resource heavy with no guaranteed conversion. Classic cautious thinking. But our optimistic strategies, they are throwing out creative ideas left and right. Case studies, workshop, partnership, affiliate programs. They are saying, let's experiment and be bold. Same output, same AI model, but completely different strategic perspectives. This is the power of compare mode in action. Now you might be thinking, okay, that's interesting, but how does this matter? Let me break down exactly why this feature is revolutionary. First, you get balanced decision making. Think about it. How many times have you made a decision and later realized you were only seeing one side of the story? With compare mode, you are literally forcing yourself to see both the pessimistic and optimistic angles of the same situation. Second, and this is huge, identifying overlap. When both the cautious consultant and the optimistic strategist agree on something, you know that's where you need to focus. Those overlapping areas, they are your non-negotiables, your absolute must-dos. It's like having two experts in the room who rarely agree, but when they do, you better listen. Third, you're essentially stress testing your ideas from both the angles. The risk ever side is going to poke holes in your plan, find every weakness, every potential pitfall. Meanwhile, the optimistic side is pushing your opportunities to the max, showing what's possible. Your final strategy becomes bulletproof because it has been attacked and defended from every angle. And finally, scenario planning becomes effortless. Instead of just hoping for the best, you now have detailed roadmaps for both your best case and worst case scenarios. You are not just prepared for success, you are prepared for anything. This completely transforms how you approach big decisions. You are no longer guessing or hoping, you are strategically analyzing with the wisdom of multiple perspectives. Ok, now for a crucial tip. Your chats aren't saved by default. Make sure to manually save responses you value or better, set auto-save in your settings. Next up is Stream, and this is where things get futuristic. The Stream module lets you interact with Gemini in real time using your voice, webcam or screen sharing. You can simply talk to AI, ask questions, get help or even just have it running in the background for companionship. Hey, what's up? Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's up? How can I help you? 
I need five creative ideas to market my eco-friendly home products. Can you help me with that? Sure. How about hosting online workshops on sustainable living, partnering with eco-conscious influencers, creating engaging social media campaigns focused on environmental benefits, offering a subscription box service, or organizing local cleanup events? Those are a few ideas to get you started. While you can just talk to AI conversationally like this, the real power is screen sharing. Imagine you are stuck in Google Sheets trying to remember how to create a pivot table. Instead of searching for tutorials, you can simply ask Gemini for help while sharing your screen. You can get a life coach walking through your software in real time. Hey there, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see the screen. It looks like you have a Google Sheet open with some sales data. Right. I need help in creating a pivot table that will show the sales number with the region and product category in rows. Can you help me with that? Sure, I can guide you through that. First, can you click on any cell within your data range? Okay, then? Now, go to menu at the top and click on insert. From the down drop menu, select pivot table. Okay. A dialog box should appear asking where to create the pivot table. Choose new sheet and then click create. Okay, I'm in the new sheet. Great. On the right side, you should see a pivot table editor. Look for the rows section and click on add, then select region from the list. Yes, I have done that. Now, click on add again in the rows section and this time select product category. This will arrange the rows by region and then by product category. Next, find the val section in the pivot table editor and click on add. This will populate the pivot table with the total sales for each region and product category. Okay, I got it. You've now created a pivot table that shows the sales numbers with region and product category in the rows. This works for coding, video editing, building websites, pretty much anything. It's like having an expert looking over your shoulder, ready to help wherever you get stuck. In the run settings, you can select your model, like the new Gemini 2.5 Flash, choose from different voices, set your media resolution and control how the conversation flows. Further down, you will find Turn Coverage, which lets Gemini adjust how it responds. Features like Affective Dialog allow it to react to emotional cues, and Proactive Audio lets it start conversations on its own. Session Text helps it remember what was said before. And finally, under Tools, you will find things like Function Calling and Automatic Function Response, which are useful for specific tasks, especially if you are into development. Now let's quickly touch on the two other workspaces. We have dedicated in-depth videos for both these modules where we explore the use cases and functionalities further in this series. In the Generate Media workspace, you can use the Imagine model to generate high-quality images from TextProm. The latest version Imagine 4 was released by Google during the Google I.O. 2025. The level of detail with Imagine 4 is breathtaking producing results at a professional photography level that are perfect for presentations, websites, or marketing campaigns. But the most significant development is that with Imagine 4, AI has finally mastered rendering accurate and legible text and typography within images, a challenge that has stumped AI image generators for years. So to really push Imagine 4's new typography engine, I am giving it a very complex prompt. I am asking for a photorealistic ad for a luxury coffee brand, Solaris, which requires multiple textiles, including a post gold foil and tidy legible fight print, all within a moody cinematic scene. This is a tough test. Let's see how it does. Voila, look at this. It followed the prompt incredibly well. The quality is genuinely professional photography level. It got the brand name Solaris perfect. Not just the spelling, but the goel foil texture looks amazing. And look closer, the fine print at the bottom of the pouch is completely crisp and clear. That level of detail in typography is exactly the breakthrough I was hoping to see. This changes what possible with AI-generated visuals. We can also use the Veo for generating video. With the Veo model, you can turn static images into engaging animated images with simple comments and also create stunning videos with text prompt. While Veo 3 isn't yet available in the AI studio, Veo 2 produces impressive results. Google will probably release Veo 3 in the near future in Google AI studio. We can also explore speed generation that creates realistic voiceovers and can even generate podcast episodes with multiple hosts.
If this video is helping, tap like, it trains the algorithm to smile at us. And hit subscribe so you don't miss the next prompt in our AI playbook. Finally, there's the build module, where ideas become functional applications. Let me show you an example. Say you want to create a mini app that tracks employee mood anonymously, giving managers insight into daily organizational vibes with simple charts and analysis. I'll enter the prompt and the AI starts writing code. Within minutes, we have a functional app where users can select their mood and submit it anonymously. There is also a dashboard section that records and analyzes inputs, shows comprehensive reports for managers to interpret. You can save the app, deploy it to cloud, or share it with anyone. Incredible, right? We'll explore this section more deeply in subsequent videos, building awesome apps for serious, useful, and entertaining purposes. Meanwhile, check out the showcase on Google AI Studio's website for pre-built app demos. As amazing as AI Studio is, it has limitations. The free tier has usage caps, especially for heavy tasks like video generation and app deployment. Most importantly, here's the catch I mentioned right at the beginning of the video, data privacy. When using unpaid services like AI Studio, Google might use your data to improve their products. If you're working with sensitive client data or proprietary information, this is a major concern. This is where the Gemini API comes in. By enabling billing and using the API either on this platform or through Vertex AI, you can gain more privacy and move to a pay-as-you-go model, removing free tile limits. That said, for most users starting their AI journey, the free tile provides months of valuable experimentation to determine whether upgrading is necessary. So there you have it, your official unwritten manual for Google AI Studio. We have seen how it offers high quality output than standard apps, and we have walked through the powerful chat, stream, generate media, and build workspaces. This is just the beginning of the AI Studio Power User Clip. This is the foundation that prepares you for the advanced techniques in our upcoming videos. Next, we'll explore transforming existing content into multiple formats, creating professional video series from written materials, and building automated content workflows that save 15 plus hours weekly. We'll also cover advanced document analysis, automated literature reviews, interactive study guides, and preparation techniques for high-stakes presentations using AI-generated scenarios. And finally, end-to-end -end application building, custom integrations, user authentication, and monetization strategies for AI-powered tools. If you're ready to unlock Gemini's full potential, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Got a question? Drop it in the comment section and let me know when you're most excited to try the AI Studio first. Thanks for watching AI Futures Toolbox and I'll see you in the next one.